Welcome to Duck Club Tuning and Finding the Sweet Spot. Grab a cup of coffee and like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to Duck Flow Tuning, Find the Sweet Spot. Today I've got the Apple AirPod Pro 3s. I bought these off Amazon, paid full price. So Duck Bloke buys stuff. A lot of hype's been going around about these, about the way they're tuned, about their functionality. And I wanted to learn this for myself. So I started my journey. I have the OGs. So I don't have the twos, but I do have the ones to compare it against. And I just did a TWS video where I reviewed the Soundpeats Air 5 Pros. And we're going to talk about all of this, but this is going to be two videos. It's going to be two. Uh, reason for that. First, I'm going to show you tip rolling and how important it is to get a really good seal with your TWS, especially these new AirPod Pro 3s. They actually have the ability to measure how well your ears are sealed on both the right and the left. You do a test within the app. This is not a video about the app itself. This is more about what I did to get the absolute best out of this. And the first step is to make sure that it's sealed well so that I can tune it. Once I did that, I tuned it. And we're going to talk about that in the second video. But let's focus on, on tip rolling and how the AirPod Pro 3s are better than the OGs. These are the OGs. That's the, the case for the OG. Let's take these out. They don't have tips on them right now. And what's different about these nozzles than the, the new one is they actually have a lip on them. Even though the nozzle is very shallow, it has a lip which allows you to take a tip that's made for TWS and clip them on. Here's a, a this is a spin fit tip. There it is, it just clicked on. So that is actually on there quite well. And these fit really shallow. They're actually made to fit the AirPod Pros. And the reason that they need to be shallow is when you put these in the case, and close the lid, and it's taking up all that space where the air tip goes, it closes, it just closes. I actually tried to do something like an Asla Sedna AirFit, the smallest size that I have. This is an Asla AirFit that's made for regular IEMs. And I put this on here, and it looks like it's really small, but when you put it into the case, you can't close it, and it's not gonna charge. That's why you have to stick with something that's incredibly shallow. You can't just grab any tip and put them onto the AirPod Pros. These are tips that are actually made for TWS. These are also Aslas, but these are super small tips and they have narrow bore. And they will fit into the case, but only just. They take up all the space that's in this case. That was the limiting factor on this previous version. Uh, now let's talk about what they've done on the new version. Let's take the two cases. This is the AirPod Pro 3 case. Let's open this up, put them side by side from the top view, and you can see how much space there is just here for the, for the tips to fit into the case. They've opened this up. I thought, great, now I can tip roll and I can find a, a better fit tip that goes on to this set. But you know what they did? They got rid of the lip. So now there's no lip, it's smooth. It, it's, it's a little bit longer than it used to be. You can see it there, but it's smooth. Just the smoothness of it creates a challenge as to which tips are going to work. Uh, so the first thing I did is again, I grabbed these. And I said, okay, let's try some Asla Sandea AirFit tips. And let's put those in the case. And let's see if we now fit in this case. Yep fits. Okay. So then I put this in my ear. You can see there's quite a bit of room there. It wiggles. I put this in my ear and it just didn't get the tip depth. And, and I, I wet them a little bit, put them in again, moved them around. They were, the seal was okay, but it wasn't that great. But I thought, okay, I've got more space here. I can put bigger tips on this. So pulled those off. What I went to next is its bigger brother. So I went up to the medium size tips, put those on and they fit and they held pretty well. I put them in the case, closed it. Ooh, it closes. Okay, there's a lot of space there. So then I took this out, wet it a little bit, tried to get a good seal. It was a pretty good seal. And it was sort of like I was doing Goldilocks, right? This bed's too firm, this bed's too soft, this bed's just right. Um, and this wasn't just right. I thought, okay, I've got some space to move around here and try some different things now. Then I, I moved over to my favorite tips which I did on these sound peats. And one of the reasons I love the sound peats was because the tips fit so well inside the case. So put that down. 
And the sound piece actually do have a lip. I took that and I put it on to, oh, and it pops off. Uh-oh. So I tried using these. I actually used them for several hours and they kept popping off and leaving the tip in my ear. And that's a problem. You don't want this left in your ear. Even though this is the best sealing tip and they sealed incredibly well, it, it just wasn't biting because it doesn't have a lip. It was just kept falling off. It wasn't going to work. So the velvet tips were out. That's gone. I thought, hmm, let's move over and try the pen and lacquer tips. And pen and lacquer tips, they actually have this like stickiness to them. I don't know if you can hear that when you rub them against each other. Their coefficient of friction is quite high. And so they grab onto each other or they grab onto your skin really well. That can work as a plus or a minus because when you're trying to get a good fit, you want something that sort of moves around in there and slips in there and then else and seals. Whereas this, you got to sort of wet it a little bit to get it to seal really well. Uh, but it did go on to this fairly well and it held. Okay, so now I was able to hold this. So I was getting somewhere. I was like, okay, I'm able to hold this because this has a high coefficient of friction and the, the nozzle size on this is small enough that it was able to grip on to the AirPod Pro 3s. So then I, I said, you know what? I'm gonna change over to some spin fits again. So these are spin fits. These are 360s and these are large. Just like the, the pen and lacquers, they have a high coefficient of friction. You see how hard it is to get onto the nozzle? That's actually a good thing because that means it's doing its job and it's probably going to hold really well once it is on there. Okay, now it's on. And you can see just how well that's holding. Okay, so these held really well and they sealed fairly well as well. But the problem is they're so soft that when you put them in your ear, they scrunch up. They, they fit, but I, you know, I, I found that my sound was changing a bit when I was moving these around because it was crushing too much when it was in my ears. So again, Goldilocks, that wasn't going to work. So then I went over and I grabbed some other Eslas, and these are uh, the Sendea Airfit Celastic 2s, and these are made for standard and TWS. And I thought, okay, this is also made out of that surgical grade sticky silicon. You can hear it sticking to itself again. There, it's on. Okay, and these actually fit pretty well and the nozzle stayed open fairly well as well. And I thought, ooh, okay, we're getting closer. This is like nine out of 10. It's almost there. And, it, and when I put it in, again, I wet it a little bit with my lips just to give it some moisture. And then I, I let it sit in there and then it would stick and it would hold, it would grip uh, the, the uh, air canal. And see how it popped off just then? Okay. So it's not absolutely perfect. But that being said, I thought, okay, I'm going to try something that I've had for a while. I'm going to try these ear tips. And, and these are what are called Pentacon Courier ear tips. And these have a brass insert in them. So there's a, a piece of brass inside. I don't know if you can see that. That holds that diameter of the hole uh, steady. And I put these on. There they go. Okay. So that's on all the way. I'm going to peel this back so you can see it go on there. Okay, so there's the nozzle. I've peeled that back so that you can see this fit over the nozzle. There. Okay, so that is holding really well. Much better than, let's say, the Davinas Velvets. Let's see how this fits. And this is a medium large tip. I'll put this in the case. Okay, and I thought, ooh, that's sticking out a lot. I wonder if that's going to go. There's your answer. It fits. Okay. So I was able to find a tip that fit and I was able to shake my head violently with these in after they were in for like half an hour and they still didn't come out. They were sticking so well, sticky silicon that grips really well. So let's put these both on and put them in the case so you can see. That's one, do the right, okay, that's two, there they are, they both fit, and put that down, and it closes. Wow, that's cool. So I found a tip that takes up all the space, 
keeps the hole open just like the original tips do. So there's the original tips. The original tips, that's the largest one. Um, you can see it's made out of a hard plastic ins insert in there that makes sure that the hole stays open when you put it in. And they're oval shaped. And I couldn't get these to seal really well. That's why I went to, to tip rolling. And once I got this done, everything sealed. Everything was sealed and it was stuck in my ear and it wouldn't come out and they worked really well. So let's actually zoom up on this. So these are the Pentagon tips. They're available on Linsol. And I'm not advertising Pentagon tips here by any means. They cost $49. They're not cheap. It's a fairly expensive tip, but this is what worked for me. And I guess that's the point here is don't be complacent with, you know, whatever Apple gives you and think that you're stuck just using this. Hopefully uh, this, this video helps you to select a better tip and try that tip roll yourself and find something that seals a little bit better into your ear because that's the first step, making sure that these sound the absolute best they can. And the next thing that I did, I took uh, the trace from SquigLink, uh, and that's at duckboat.squig.link, used one of my targets or several of my targets, and I actually tested this out, and I filled in this. This was probably the biggest problem that I saw uh, when I was listening to these, is the, the male vocals, the vocals are recessed. The bass is is very, let's say, rumbly, but it's missing that mid to upper bass region where you get your slam. It really needed that area corrected uh, using parametric equalizer, and that's what I did in this. I also brought it down slightly here from 6 to 8K. That was to eliminate some of the sibilance. I know that listener was uh, complaining about this being slightly sibilant, and I could hear it. So I was able to control that sibilance, and I was also able to fill in this region here between, let's say, 2K and 6K, where that hole is making instruments not as detailed, like uh, uh, ride cymbals. I was, you know, the tapping on ride cymbals all of a sudden popped out when I was able to change uh, the sound signature using the parametric EQ. Now, one of the challenges you have is if you connect this to an Android device, you don't have all the functionality the AirPod Pro 3s give you. And the app is really phenomenal with all the things it can do within an Apple device, but there's no app for Android that lets you access all the functionality that these give you. I really wanted to use these in my Apple devices because I do have, I have an Android phone, but I also have an Apple phone. I have an iPhone 16 and my iPad Pro. These are capable of running something called Neutron Player. And I'm going to show you Neutron. So that's the parametric EQ loaded into Neutron Player. The second video is going to talk about this because it's quite complicated how you get these in and listen to music using Neutron Player because it is not a system-wide parametric EQ. There are no system-wide parametric EQs available on these Apple devices. I wish there was. I wish there was a power amp or a UAPP app for Apple, but there isn't. So you're stuck with Neutron Player, but Neutron Player is very powerful once you learn how to use it. So I'm going to do a tutorial on what I did with this, and then I'm going to give you my sound impressions as well as what I rate these at. And I could tell you it elevated a lot. Huge difference being able to apply the PEQ to this versus no PEQ. So, and, and the player's kind of cool. So let's, let's play this. And now you can see that it gives you that the visible bars at, at all the different frequencies that it's playing right now. But those settings are all of these settings. So you're not limited to four. You can actually have quite a few. I haven't. It, it, I only use up to ten, but this goes beyond ten. So you're able to take this and on each one of these settings, set your frequency, set your gain, set your Q value, and add as many as you like. And I've created a file for this, and I'll send it to you. Just like I do for PowerAmp, I have a file that imports directly into Neutron Player. And with that, wait for the second video. I'll talk more about how to, how to use this. It'll be a tutorial in Neutron Player, and then it'll give you the review of the Apple AirPod Pro 3s. And with that, like and subscribe to the channel. Duck Look Out.